the valuable things are and what the most efficient order is, um, is our goal when we're building out the roadmap. So we want to account for dependencies, readiness, getting that, that business sponsor, uh, executive sponsor buy-in. Uh, we also want to consider the company timeline. Are there other dependencies going on at the organization that we should factor in when we're deciding to plan out our roadmap for achieving our data and analytics goals? Um, some of those things might include an ERP migration or an upcoming acquisition um, or availability of key resources. For example, if there's certain seasons or times of the year when um, the people that we're going to need to include in the planning process may be more or less available. Uh, we also want to prioritize potential use cases um, and use that to, to design a roadmap that's going to help us build a foundation with quick wins and then iterate. And most importantly, we want to follow through on the plan that we design out. Um, and we want this plan to be adaptable and we want to revisit it and update the roadmap after each phase. A prioritization matrix is one technique or tool that you can use to help build out a roadmap. So when we're interviewing our business stakeholders, we're listening for all those wonderful opportunities of use cases where we could use data and analytics to make a difference in the business. Um, and when we document those, we are also documenting them with an understanding of the potential business impact that they could have, as well as the technical feasibility involved with implementing or acting on that use case. And by rating each use case on those relative scales, meaning is this use case more or less complex than the other use case, um, we can then get to um, an overall score. It doesn't have to be one to one with our roadmap, but it helps us it helps inform uh, and gives us some good ideas of good places to start when we're thinking about how we want to fa build phases in our roadmap. And when we plot those use cases on a graph based on those two uh, scales that we were talking about, we can focus in on that upper right corner, which is going to be our sweet spot where we can get those quick wins. Those are going to be our use cases that will have high business impact, uh, but are also highly feasible. So that way we're choosing that path of least resistance and creating an effective order where we're uh, tackling some use cases, building a foundation with those. Uh, by building that foundation, we're also making the other use cases possibly slightly more technically feasible. Um, and as we're tackling different data sets, there's also often overlapping needs with the types of data across use cases. So if we replot these use cases after each phase, we should see a migration uh, or a shift of some of those use cases to the right um, as we build that foundation.